Okay, in this video, we're going to look uh, at a quick intro of vector projections and decompositions. So the first way we can think about this is just look at a basic vector 3i, 4j. And one thing you could think about is let's actually draw the vector. Here's the vector i hat. And let's also draw the vector j hat on here. I'm just going to draw it right here just so we can see. And so notice that this first part of the vector, 3i, is represented by, let's put, what color do we want for this? By this, so this is the vector right here, 3i, and this is the vector here, 4j. And so notice I can add the 3i plus the 4j, the light pink and the light green, and that gets me back to the blue vector. So in another way we could think about this vector is not writing it as a vector that's uh, parallel to the x-axis plus a vector parallel to the y-axis. We could think of just rotating our axis any direction we wanted. So suppose I just rotate it this way. And then I could say, well, how could I write this vector b as a sum of two new vectors? So I'm going to call this one u. This is a unit vector in this direction. And I will call this one v, which is another unit vector orthogonal. So here. And then you can imagine that we could see just from vector addition that I can write this v vector as the sum of this light pink vector here plus the sum of this light green vector. And so we want to find those new vectors. And I could do this for any line. I could rotate it any way around, how far I wanted. And you can see we could think of this blue vector as a sum of these new pink and green vectors. So let's find the pink vector first. So I'm just going to rewrite it down here so we can think about it some more. So a recall a vector, in order to come up with a vector, I need a magnitude and a direction. So I already have the direction, which is just u. And so now I need the magnitude of this vector. And here's where we can use what we know from trig. Let's think of this angle as being here in between these. And using this angle, I can see that this length right along here. Well, let's think of what trig function I can use, because what length do I know? I know this length up here. This, let's draw that a little bit cleaner. This length right here is the magnitude of b. In this case, it was 5, but we'll just write it as magnitude b in general. And so if I want to know this bottom length, we can notice that cosine of theta is going to be this bottom length that I want. So I'm just going to call it magnitude that I want divided by the magnitude of b, which means that the magnitude that I want is just magnitude of b cosine theta. Okay, so we can replace that over here. This is helpful because that means this magnitude right here is actually the magnitude of my original vector times the cosine of the angle. But the problem is, I don't know what the cosine of that angle is. Even if, even if I knew what the vector u hat is, it's often hard to find the cosine of an angle between two vectors. Except we have something that can help us with this. So recall how we could find the angle between two vectors. We learned that the dot product between two vectors is equal to the magnitude of the vectors multiplied together times the cosine of the angle. So this is great because we can now think of what happens if I take the dot product between u hat and b. So I'm just replacing them with the ones that we have here. Just sit here. Okay, so let's go actually do these pieces out. So notice, what is the magnitude of u hat. We'll do magnitude of u hat, magnitude of b, cosine theta. Oops, and b is not a unit vector, so let's fix that. But u is a unit vector, and that's why I'm putting little hats on top of it. Okay, so the fact that u is a unit vector means that this is just going to be 1. 
and so we just know and then you, magnitude of b is 5 in this case but let's just leave it as magnitude of b so this would work in general for any type of vector we could change it if needed okay so notice what we just found that this quantity that is the magnitude of my new pink vector is actually just the dot product between u and b so let's replace that over here okay so let's go replace that over here so really we don't have to know the angle because we can use what we know about the dot product and I get dot product of u and my vector b times the u vector because here's the magnitude and here's the direction okay so we've just found a way that we can rewrite uh, this pink vector and we actually have a name for this we call this the projection of the vector b onto the vector u so whatever you project onto goes down here in subscript and the vector itself is here and we are defining that as you can see as just the dot product between the two vectors and then multiplied by the vector in the direction that we're trying to project onto so the vector u here and then I have u dotted with b okay great so that's the projection vector and then we could see what how do I find this light green vector so this whole vector from here to here um, that's what we call the orthogonal projection and instead of doing a bunch more trig to try to figure it out you could notice so we'll call this the orthogonal projection on to u of b and notice in this nowhere in here do we actually name this little v hat vector we just ignore it because we're actually not even going to need to use it to find this whole light green vector we can use vector addition instead to notice that the light pink plus the light green has to give me the blue vector b so that means i can get this light green vector by just taking the b vector and subtracting the projection vector so minus the projection onto u of b okay so why do we care <laughs> there are lots of applications where we care about this uh, sometimes we're interested in decomposing a force in to its components that are in a certain direction and orthogonal to a certain direction or we could think of wind and airplanes and other objects flying so if we thought of this b vector as the velocity vector of wind and we had an airplane that was flying along this dotted gray line then we could say what is the plane's tailwind and what's the plane's crosswind and in this case the tailwind is this projection vector this light, light pink and the crosswind would be this orthogonal vector this light green so there's lots of ways that we can think of decomposing vectors into two other orthogonal vectors that add to get us our original vector so you may be thinking well okay that seemed to work but what if I don't have a unit vector what if I want to find the projection onto some random vector a of my vector b and notice that means you can just replace it just make a a unit vector so I'm just going to replace instead of writing u hat I'm going to replace it with a unit vector which I write this way and then I still take the dot product of that with b and then I need to multiply by the unit vector which would just be a divided by its magnitude so that's the more general formula you'll see for a projection but I often find it's fastest just whatever way I'm projecting I just switch and make it a unit vector right away and then it's not as hard of a formula to remember